a little introverted, so it's difficult for me to make new friends in person. I prefer reading people's thoughts via text or stalking people, I'm not the only one. And since you're all here right now, I'd like to get to know you. With that in mind, can you please kindly show me your diary? And no, do not turn to today's date. Let's flip back a few pages. Let's flip back to the month of January. Show me your resolutions. Show me just how wild your imagination can run uninterrupted. Show me your mustard seed size of dreams. Show me how you measure your own capabilities when no one is watching. And if you feel like I'm invading a little bit of your privacy, I can understand that. To be fair, maybe I should have started by showing you mine. You see, my diary looks a little bit like a bootleg version of the Book of Psalms. My diary looks a little bit like the first three weeks of a brand new relationship. My diary looks a little bit like two-minute microwaved prayers of emergency. My diary looks like churches on a Saturday night, empty. And sometimes my diary looks like that slow last conversation right before a breakup. Sometimes my diary looks like a condolence book. Without felt messages going out to all the people that we've lost this year, my diary is an onslaught of thoughts and emotions loud like Great East Road and Jumbo Drive combined during a riot. My diary is loud, like a blast at the port of the city of Beirut, loud like gunshots or, or fireworks. It's sometimes it's like I can't breathe between a knee on my neck or gassing in my city, my diary. Sometimes it's like fireworks on New Year's Eve. Sometimes it's like a, a glorious countdown into the new decade, like, like 10,000 screaming fans in an erupted woodland stadium. Goes to show that dreams really do come true regardless of your musical preferences. Like nine to five jobs are slowly wallowing on their deathbeds. We need to wake up. Like, like eight out of 10 companies at some point this year resorted to working remotely and they are looking to do so even after the pandemic. Seven other people lost their lives in a tragic helicopter crash that claimed the lives of Kobe Bryant and daughter. Six days into the month of August 2020, I lost one of my best friends to diabetes. And saying that I miss him is, is, is an understatement. Five plus 9,995 views on this poem is all that I'm asking for. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Four years even after his diagnosis, Chadwick Aaron Bossman continued to give us the best of himself on our screen. So of course, of course, you'll forever be our king. Three nights was all it took for a few friends of mine. Okay, we're broke. So three nights was all it took for a few friends of mine to sell out half the seats of an event without actually printing the tickets all through the power of Facebook and EFTs. Two billion active Facebook users. Now, I can't overemphasize the need to be socially present as a brand or a company or an individual. Now, one. There'll always be that one person who will never respond to your DMs. You'll get over it. <laughs> now you see, my diary looks a little bit, just a little bit like a mess, like Sunday morning bathroom marathons in readiness for church when you are late. My diary looks a little bit, no, actually a lot, like me and all that I've been through. Someone told me, if you want to make God laugh, 
Tell him your plans. What a comedy show this year must have been for him. <laughs> and honestly, for me too. But my laughter wasn't brewed from the best of humor. It was a response to defeat, to limitation, to uncertainty, to losses. And our generation is so poetic. You can see it with the memes and the quotes. We say stuff like, L's don't mean losses anymore. They're lessons. <laughs> My L's this year have looked a lot more like lessons, a lot more like dead ends, like trying to use Google Maps in my neighborhood. I get nowhere. <laughs> and based on the energy right here, I can tell somehow that my diary looks a little bit like yours. After any tragedy, we are often of the perception that all that we possess thereafter are remnants. I'm of the idea that there are requirements, requirements for the next stage in life. And collectively, I think our diaries have looked a little bit like plan A, plan B, plan C, you name it. Our diaries have looked like the new normal, Zoom meetings, e-learning, face masks, they have looked like the end of an era. And I was talking to this crazy wise man, and he told me, kid, you know, the new structure of the modern company will consist of only a man and a dog. I was like, what? <laughs> he was like, listen, the man will be there strictly to feed the dog. And the dog will be there precisely to keep the man from touching their automated equipment. I was like, okay. But slowly, I'm starting to see it. And as a new year beckons, I might just wing this. I might just wait until we get new diaries or journals, or whatever you call them. And maybe then, they will look a little bit more like a new blueprint for Eden instead of the usual applications to join a crumbling system. In a nutshell, our diaries have looked like pruning. But once the vine dresser is done pruning his branches, it's impossible for those branches not to thrive. So once again, now, can you show me your diary? <laughs>